Hello everyone, welcome to Travel Explore Celebrate Life by Veena World. We are Neil and Sunila and today's episode's theme is the Gateway of India, which is so close to us. Sunila, on the Gateway of India when you visit, there's an inscription written which reads that it is like an like if I were to put it in quotes, start quote erected to commemorate the landing in India of their imperial majesties King George V and Queen Mary on the 2nd of December. And in Roman numerals, it is said MCMXI, which also sort of kind of translates into about 1911. So Sunila, the gateway of India is the first thing that people see when they are coming in from the Arabian Sea to the west of India. Where should we start when we talk about the gateway of India? Neil, you mentioned the Gateway of India. I'm so happy to talk about something that is, you know, a part of our city, the the icon of our city. Uh, So it's really nice to speak about it today. I think let's start with what you just mentioned, Neil, that why it was made. It was made to uh, welcome uh, King George V and uh, Mary of Tech, uh, the Empress, Empress Consort at Apollo Bandar in India, because that was the first thing that they would want to see. And typically, arches are built, you know, these are like triumphal arches, which are, which used to be built to uh, say, show their colony, that this is our colony, and it was built. But isn't it funny that for the people that it was built, didn't really get to see it at all. So I think that would be a great point to start that the reason it was built and for whom it was built, they couldn't see it. Exactly. So... Am I not right when I say that they arrived in 1911 mm-hmm. and they actually walked into a cardboard replica of what the gateway of India is go- was going to be. So if my timeline is correct, they arrived in 1911, but the foundation stone was actually laid on the 31st of March, 1913. 1915 to 1919, land was reclaimed and the seawall was built. 1920, the foundations were completed and finally the construction was finished in 1924. So, like, it's it's weird because this was built for you, but you didn't get to see it. That's and awesome. yeah, like, I just I just find it weird. But let's talk about the architecture and design for a bit. Yeah, Neil. So, so the reason it was built and uh, this was the first visit of a British monarch to India. That is why they really wanted to build it. And in 1911, they had the Delhi Darbar, which is where the, you know, they actually sat down with everyone in India. And that is like a proper visit of a monarch to, uh, to the colony, which was India then. And they came in for the Delhi Darbar, but they came in via Bombay, then Bombay, you know, Mumbai. And that's how they went. But if the foundation stone itself wasn't laid, then obviously they walk into a makeshift cardboard uh, um, replica. And that's, you know, the rest you've just told us that it actually was built much later in 1924. Yeah, and coming to the architecture, I think it's quite interesting. What I've always seen is some of the best architects are Scottish. And the same thing happened uh, with this. So final design that was selected was of George Whitted. And this itself was sanctioned in 1914. So, you know, the timelines are a little funny here. But, uh, I, you know, when I was reading Neil, I found it quite interesting that George Whitted has actually shaped quite a few uh, structures in Mumbai, for that matter. And one of those, I happen to have the, um, the privilege of being able to study out there. And this is uh, KEM Hospital and St. Gordon Das, um, uh, you know, Medical College. And this was built by, designed by George Whitted. So I, I just felt quite proud about that. Also, Wadia Hospital, Bombay House. Uh, all of this were, you know, designed by George Witted. So with an arch of about 26 meters mm-hmm. in like height, that is 85 feet and the central dome, which has a diameter of about 49 feet or 15 meters. Um, I remember reading that, of course, it was uh, built of yellow basalt and reinforced mm-hmm. concrete. concrete but, yeah. Sunila, the gateway is at an angle, right? It's not straight when you visit it. Why is that? That's right, Neil. So the entire plan was really quite huge. The whole plan was to develop the area around it also. So when they built the gateway and later on when the BMC took over, uh, you know, uh, restoring the area and they restored quite a bit of it, but they had, they had really planned to put in a lot around the area, but 
they had lack of funds and they never really completed the entire project and that is why the whole thing was to have a proper walkway that led up to it and that was never built at all so and then later on of course things just escalate right it becomes much more expensive like i think the gateway itself was built at that time to the tune of some 24 lakh rupees or something which today if you really you know adjust for inflation and everything will be a crazy amount and even to build a roadway leading to that would involve a lot of money and and somehow the funds never really reached that place and they had to just then make do with whatever was done but i think it's still an amazing place to go it still looks so beautiful and talking of architecture neel it's um, you know if you look at the architecture this kind of architecture the indo saracenic kind of architecture was really popular with these british architects at that point so they kind of took it took together different influences and merged everything together so you had the gothic european influence in there with the towers that you see you have the arches and the domes which came from the indo islamic architecture so for a lot of british architects they thought more than the hindu architecture of the temples that you see they kind of adapted the islamic architecture and that is why you see so many domes and turrets and you know things like that in all of these uh, buildings so it's it's just so beautiful and when lit up it looks even more stunning doesn't it so you mentioned the road that was supposed to lead from the gateway into the mm -hmm. city so i think um in my research i found out that you know the marble arch in uh, in the uk or mm -hmm. the arc de triomphe in paris we often have roads that lead from them to a part of the city so south mumbai being south mumbai and the gateway of india being the gateway of india the first thing that people would see when they were arriving into mumbai mm -hmm. via, from the arabian sea the whole idea was that it leads to the center of the city which then would have been south mumbai and like would have been interesting if that would have happened because the aerial photo that you can see would just be beautiful here i'd just like to give listeners and viewers a tip is that if you ever were to visit the taj make sure you go to the top floor restaurant of the new wing of the taj mahal there's a restaurant called sook out there and from there you get a good view of the gateway and the picture that you can see is as good as a drone taking a photo of the gateway all of the small yachts or jetties that are the jetties as in the boats that ferry people bit from gateway of india to the elephanta caves to ali bag park there so the i found i found that quite interesting and that is that is quite beautiful so what else is there sunila in the gateway of india complex so neil you also have the statue of uh, shivaji maharaj around there and also of swami vivekanand and um, of course that whole area uh, apollo bandar on which it is built serves as a place which is the jetty for uh, you know to take ferries uh, to go to ali bag mandwa and all of that there are about five uh, jetties there one is solely for the use of brc two of them are commercial use uh, one belongs to the royal yacht club and uh, one of course is closed right now so there, there are these five jetties around there and even when we go there and i think just to go there and see the boats leaving and coming in it's really quite nice to do that and of course that is the place that you would take a jetty to go to a ferry to go to elephanta caves as well um, you know one of the famous sightseeing places in and around mumbai to go to ali bag to go to different places a lot of uh, boats leave from there or just a sightseeing cruise around the harbor in uh, mumbai so that also serves that's also something you can do so evenings are really fun times there and you really see the city come alive out there and you mentioned the taj and i think it's it's so beautiful that when you're at the gateway you can look at the taj mahal uh, palace hotel which itself is a sight to behold and when you are in the hotel you're looking at the gateway and again that's a beautiful sight so you been either ways wherever you are you know you mentioned the shivaji maharaj statue which was unveiled on the 26th of january republic day 1961 and it actually replaced a bronze statue of yeah. king george the 5th which stood in its place so there's a slight story behind it because when the british left india and we as we end the episode we'll come to uh, how the gateway of india also played a huge role in the british leaving india mm -hmm. um there were many statues of british officials british kings and queens and um all of the lords erected all across india so there was this thing around india where 
we had gotten our independence and people wanted to remove all of these statues so that's why you don't often see statues of british yeah. authorities or emperors or queens erected because around the period of 1961 before and after that most statues were removed and they were replaced with historic figures they didn't from want to be reminded about it right the struggle and the the pain that people went through yeah, yeah. and you know if you were to check uh, what the british media had to say about this and they were just pissed because they were like it's already done why do you want to remove it let it be because yeah. it's of historical significance but now the statue is just on there and that was something interesting that i actually quite found found out but do you want to tell us the story about the british leaving india or should i take it maybe you can continue with that and i have a some something else to say once you give that story awesome so you know the gateway of india was um built to welcome king george the 5th but when the british were leaving india it was also the point where the last british troops pass through the gateway of india before leaving so the last troops were known as the first battalion of the somerset light infantry and this passed through the gateway of india with a 21 gun salute on the 28th of february 1948 which also signaled the end of the british raj in india so it was built to welcome the first visit by a british monarch to india and it was also the point where the british left india and that was the final goodbye as they sailed across the arabian sea going back to the uk this was the point where it uh, it actually all ended the end of the british raj as they would call it but yeah what did you have to tell us no i just want to say that whenever you are planning to visit and see the gateway of india i think every time is a good time but it's really nice in the early mornings when the sun is just rising and it's a very quiet time around there so that is really nice and if you are staying at the taj mahal hotel then of course it's a great idea to get out and go for a walk uh, but the other popular times of course is sunset when everything is glowing and it's golden and especially if you've taken a cruise and you can actually do that for a um, you know it's so easy to go on a sightseeing cruise today around the mumbai or even a yacht you can go yachting as well and you you can go sailing so when you're coming back it just looks so beautiful at sunset so i think for a celebration for a birthday anniversary again that is really nice and if you stay a little longer than at night when it's really illuminated with the taj mahal palace in the background it is really stunning and for that i think we should thank philips lighting india which kind of set up this whole led system which can uh, light up the place with 16 16 million shades so 16 million shades of light uh and when they put it in it cost them something like 2 crores but we are really thankful for that because it's uh, it's stunning to see those lights and uh the gateway neel has always been the place where people uh, you know congregate for different things for protests for any kind of you know to raise a cause or whatever um and today of course is heavily armed and protected also uh, due to a lot of things that have events of the past but one of the nice things and we really hope to look forward to seeing that again is the elephanta caves dance festival which moved from the elephanta caves to the gateway so i think i love open air musicals and i love open air festivals and you know dance festivals and um to be have the background of something that historic and about 2000 2500 people 3000 people um to be to sit with together and feel the energy is just something totally different so really hoping that we can all get back to the time where uh, open air festivals do take place and slowly we are getting there so the elephanta festival of music and dance now is held not at elephanta caves but at gateway and i think it's it's the perfect backdrop for us yeah it's it's stunningly lit and also the navy day parade happens at the gateway of india yeah. so currently as we are recording this this is in the first week of december there is the navy day parade preparations going on so that also is something that you should definitely not miss but yep that was the gateway of india sunila mm -hmm. thank you so much listeners thank you so much viewers next week we'll come back with another historical monument of incredible india or from somewhere around the world keep listening keep sharing your feedback and we will keep coming up with many more such videos take care stay safe and happy december